Okay, people, so more sci fi London goodness for you today. We have got Luke Walters, the director, co writer, producer, and you edit it like you, you do a lot of yeah, shit on this, man. Hat. <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, yeah, it's all encompassing, very all encompassing. <laughs> trust me, needed a break, needed a break afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate the time, man. Thank you for dropping by. Uh, anytime, man. Anytime. Awesome. Well, yeah, you've got a new short film. I made War of the Worlds. Yeah. So it's a yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a funny one. So I'm a massive, massive, uh, massive War of the Worlds fan. And um, even the Tom here... Cruise movie. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well. I'm a massive Jeff Wayne War of the Worlds fan. I'm a massive George Powell War of the Worlds fan. But no, the, the the Tom Cruise film does have a does have a lot of merit, and it, I think it does actually. It, it stays true to stays true to a lot of the aspects of the book, um, but obviously deviates deviates a, a fair amount. But there's a lot of it that, that stays true to home. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's still a fan. Like, I mean, you know, anything more of the worlds, I'm I'm pretty much eating up to be honest. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Right, right. So, what was the like? Where where did the impetus to kind of take that love and turn it into your next show? So I think it was about 20, 2017, 2018. Um, so the the History Wells books recently come out into the public domain. And I've always been interested in War of the Worlds. I was a massive Jeff Wayne fan. I've been seeing Jeff Wayne, uh, the Jeff Wayne War of the Worlds musical for so many years. And I met Jeff Wayne as well. And he told a, couple, he told a lot of interesting stories about um, the Tom Cruise film and about dealing, his dealings with Spielberg as well. And okay. um yeah, yeah, which is which is really really interesting. It was, it was like Richard Burton week in Cardiff, and they held uh, they held an they held an event, and uh, they had Jeff Wayne there talking, and he was like a three hundred seater um, theater, and only ten people turned up. What? And it's just, like, this is yeah, it was horrendously advertised, horrendously advertised. But me and my uncle were the were massive War of the Worlds fans, and he was like he heard he just heard it by chance on the radio, and he was like. Jeff Wayne is talking down in Cardiff. Do you want to go watch it? I was like, Ab- absolutely. Like, let's let's go. <laughs> and um, yeah, so a massive, like, yeah, just a massive Mother Worlds fan. And I think when it come around, I think the books come out into into the public domain. And as, I, I wanted to do something to do with Mother Worlds, and I was like, well, I can't remake War of the Worlds. Obviously, especially mm. on the short film budget, on a shoestring budget, it's like, well, what? can we do then it's like so looking into it more and obviously, obviously the, the Orson Wells radio broadcast is very much in the public zeitgeist and it's like yeah. well we could do something along those lines and it's like oh well what if we tried what if someone was trying to recreate more of the worlds the Orson Wells broadcast but for a modern day audience via the live streaming and via, via social media and it's like oh maybe that maybe there's something there so it's like that's where it come from it's just a little conversation it's like maybe we could it use social media and try and recreate the Orson Welles broadcast, but for a modern day audience. I think that's that's where it come from. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, that that feels like it's a easier route in than actually trying to make the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, couldn't couldn't do it otherwise. Otherwise, we'd be. Millions of pounds, and yeah, it's just be a, just be an absolute nightmare. <laughs> yeah, so this this let's do a film about a guy trying to make it famous by trying to recreate the Orson Welles broadcast. So then we can inter- inter- integrate the the elements of all the worlds into it and show the love and and the respect for the, the source material and and everything that come before it and everything that come after it. Sorry, uh, we can put that into it, and then people can be like, oh, cool, they they pay homage to the the Orson Welles broadcast, but it also paid homage to everything else that came afterwards. So it's it's it's, uh, it's very much a love letter to everything War of the Worlds. So it's like the lead the lead character is called Jeff, after Jeff Wayne. Um, Anna, uh, I think, is the girl is which is Anna Wayne, which is Jeff Wayne's daughter. Clayton is uh, Clayton's one of the characters. That's the George Powell film. Ray, that's one of the characters. That's, that's Tom Cruise. 
So it's like it's very much all the different elements as well. Right. So it's it's very yeah, much yeah, it's, yeah. it's just a love letter. It's a, it's an absolute love letter to Mortal Worlds. Uh, I didn't even pick up on any of those things. So. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, massive virgins over here, <laughs> which is so ingrained in it all. So ingrained in. I've I've got a press. I've got I got two Mortal Worlds vinyls in the corner. I think one is one is uh, the reprint. Of in the uh, coming out in like 20, 2019, 2020, and one is the original 70s print that I bought just before a Welsh rugby game. I went to watch Wales play rugby and I found it in an old vinyl shop for like 10 quid. So I went to the Welsh rugby game holding this vinyl. I was like, oh my God. I said, this is going to end up in nightmare. This is going to end up in yeah. Tears, it, I, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Is that stayed whole <laughs> through sheer determination and yeah, just fighting off guys with bites, just like, God protecting it so yeah a massive 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 uh fans of every form of all the worlds no matter what it is mm. okay yeah i i was glad you um addressed the whole issue of the internet and social media and everything like that because yeah, I think yeah, yeah. a lot of the time we have films and they're trying to do same old, same old stuff. Like, I've dropped my phone in the water and now it won't work. And we're just like, well, that's a lie. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But people still yeah. try and do those things. So when you actually address those points, I was just like, good, 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 good. Yeah, no, I think I think it needed to. I think it's very on the nose. I, I, I think it is very, very on the nose. I think everything we put on screen is there for a reason. And I think we we know the type of audience that we're aiming at, and we know uh, how passionate and uh, how protective all of the world's fans are about the source material. And uh, I think we wanted to do something that number one is not going to piss them off, <laughs> and and number two, they actually enjoy it because I know. The BBC War of the Worlds adaptation, um, which I enjoyed. I, I enjoyed. I, I think I'm one of the minority that actually enjoyed it because I know H.E. Wells' backstory and H.E. Wells', Wells backstory is actually written into War of the Worlds as well. So the character reflects more of H.E. Wells uh, in it. So the character is essentially H.E. Wells. Mm. And and then the Fox one as well, which I like the Fox one. It's, it's, it's not War of the Worlds, but it's, it's an alien invasion movie. But I, I like the yeah. Fox one. But I think we wanted to do something where a War of the Worlds fan can watch it and kind of be like, oh, okay, cool. These guys are not, they're not trying to recreate what we love, but they're paying homage to it. And yeah. we respect it because it lives in its own little world. It's, we're, not, we're not trying to do Horsewell, Horsewell Common. We're not trying to do the, the Martian Invasion. But this is about a guy that clearly loves War of the Worlds and is trying to utilize it to his advantage. So I think, yeah. And, and I think the modern, the modern technology, I think, plays a big, big part in it. It's like because the Orson the Orson Welles broadcast was how we well in how, how we went into the public zeitgeist is you know is is it caused this mass uh, mass hysteria in America. It's it's it's, mm, it's very fabricated to a degree. Did yes, it really? Did that, it not? That, it's that, like well, really it didn't. But yeah, <laughs> it didn't. It's a little bit of a spin from the newspaper because the newspapers were very much against Orson Wells at the time. But it's like let's play on that. Let's let's enjoy it. Let's have a bit of fun with it. So yeah, we're trying to encapsulate everything. So every, everyone is everyone can enjoy it for for their own reason. If you're all the world's fan, you get something out of it because you get the references and you get the homage with the material. But if you're not a world the world's fan, you're a sci-fi fan. You, you you get it. You enjoy it. It's a bit of a laugh. It's you know there's there's some very comedic moments in it. And it's it's just a very uplifting story until the last thirty seconds. So, <laughs> yeah. yes. Um, hmm. What can we say without? <laughs> right, we'll just we'll just leave the ending. Though, um, was that always there? Let's just say that was was the ending always the ending. Yeah, the ending was always the ending. The post credit scene was never the post credit scene. The post credit scene was never a post credit scene. But the ending was always the ending. The post credit scene was the the idea of uh, Jonathan Carley, who was the lead actor. Um, he would be like, "Oh, wouldn't it be nice if he did the the end credit scene, the post credit scene?" Because because apparently we're doing Marvel now. Marvel does everything, so <laughs> everyone wants to be Marvel. Uh, he was like, "Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did?" 
he's in a he's in the the podcast studio because originally the, the the film was written as a radio broadcast and it was playing direct homage but then it was like podcasts have taken off now yeah like, we need to change the script it's like this so that's why the line about joe rogan come about um and yeah he was like let's 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 go into the podcast videos the last little bit is him finally happy he gets to say that that no one would have believed he, he gets what he wants and that's the post credit <laughs> scene and that was that was john's idea and we were like oh yeah that's a that's a really good idea <laughs> why didn't we think of this yep cool let's let's do it let's do it so yeah that that's all a, that's all a john carly idea okay okay well that's cool mm. yeah like it kind of feels like it could lead into something right like it could be a proof of concept for something larger yeah i think that's the plan i think that is the plan i think it's it's there we, we've had conversations about it already i think we've had conversations amongst ourselves the cast and crew we've had I think other festivals have seen it and other festivals have approached us and be like, oh, this, this could be something larger. Would you want representation? And you know, would you want X, Y, Z? And we were like, potentially. But I think the the, the goal is the I Made War of the Worlds is, is a feature film. It is a feature film within the next couple of years. I think that is that is a story to be told. And I think that is that is the end goal for, for the film. So I think that is, yeah, that's this conversation mm-hmm. we've had externally. The script is the script is nearly there, and I think it's it's ready and waiting for the next two to three years. We're hoping to start production on it. So okay, well, okay. yeah, yeah, you picked that up really well. Yeah, fair play. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it. I was wondering as well because I saw on your website there's a I made the time machine. So yes. are we gonna put out a? Uh, Love letter to HG Wells anthology or some. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. We actually are. Yeah, we actually oh, are. So we, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So that's the goal. So that is the plan. So I made the time machine is nothing to do with the time machine whatsoever. So I think uh, it's, it's it's such a bizarre story compared. I think War of the Worlds tracks very closely to to War of the Worlds in in the radio play and everything. But I think we were kind of very trepidatious about doing the sequel to it in the fact where we were doing, I made the time machine. So we were trying to toy with the idea and we were like, we're kind of doing an adaptation and a remake and it kind of wasn't clicking with us and it kind of wasn't working. I think I had the idea once. I was like, well, what if H.G. Wells was the time traveler? What if H.G. Wells was, was this guy? What if he went into the future? What if he traveled to different dimensions and he experienced the War of the Worlds, the expansion of the Invisible Man, the Isle of Dr. Moreau. Well, he's the guy that he got all these ideas because he's the one that's jumped on his time machine and traveled. Yeah. And he's got all these ideas. So he's put in, come back and he's put them into this one book. So I think the boys were like, oh, yeah, no, that, that could work. Like, that's an idea. So that, that, that's, that sounds positive. Um, so yeah, so we got I Made the Time Machine. So it's about Hershey Wells. He's a time traveler. And he crash lands in modern day. He just had an encounter with the Morlocks, so obviously it's very much in keeping. But he's just, right, he's right. just had an encounter with the Morlocks, and he's on his way to uh, 1895. And he crash lands in modern day, so he crash lands in 2024, 2025, whenever this comes out. Um, he crash lands in uh, modern day, and he needs this university lecturer's help to get back. And this universal actor is stuck in a rut. You know, he's very much the reluctant hero of the piece. Uh, but Hishi Wells knows him. Hishi Wells already knows him because he's a time traveler. Mm. So it's very much a, a game of cat and mouse. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a bit of fun. Hishi Wells is an absolute menace. He's an <laughs> absolute, absolute menace through it, throughout. And he has a great mustache. He has a fantastic mustache. But Hishi Wells is very much, yeah, he's a, he's a pain in the, he's a pain in the derriere, shall we say. Okay, and he's so, taking these unsuspecting people along for this journey, and everyone buys into it straight away because he's because he's so lovable, but he's also the biggest miscreant on planet Earth. So, so would this then? This would have to be the lead story in the anthology, right? 
because it kind of then ties everything together. Uh, I think I don't. I don't think so because obviously it's, it's anthology. So I think very much we're trying to do um, you know the Cornetta trilogy with Edgar Wright, and, you know the Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, World's End. I think there are three very distinct stories, all told within all told within one trilogy. I'm trying to do the very much the same thing, but with I I made so it's, I made a H.G. Wells trilogy. So it'll be I made uh, I made uh, what worlds I made the Time Machine. And then I think next early next year I'm trying to put I'm trying to push for early this uh, late this year but early next year we're going to finish it off with I I made the Invisible Man and uh, yeah I think they're going to be very three distinct stories I think I think War of the Worlds is more comedy I think it is, um, uh, that's that's drawing a line I think War of the Worlds is the more drama it, the Time Machine is more sci-fi and the Invisible Man is more is more horror. I think we're do, doing three very distinct stories that kind of, kind of live in the same universe. But it's the three same cast members, so the three core cast members of, mm. of um, War of the Worlds. So they're all, they all get their own leading part. So John, John is leading War of the Worlds. Uh, James, who plays Clayton, is leading uh, The Time Machine. And Ellie, who plays Anna in War of the Worlds, she's leading I Made the Invisible Man. So they, they all get their own story, so they all get their own time in the sun, because they're all, they're all very, very good and... Uh, I think they deserve it. So, and they're all well up for it. I, I told him the idea for Invisible Man the other day because they come to me after I had a drink, and I was like, "That's the best time to have an idea for a film." And they were all like, "This, this sounds the best one of the three. Oh my god, let's do this tomorrow!" I was like, "No, <laughs> absolutely not." <laughs> but I, th- I think we'll have three very distinct stories, which will pay homage to all aspects of. Every, every trope, every you know, time travel, Doctor Who, War of the Worlds, Time Machine, Time Traveler, Invisible mm. Man, Horror, you know, even Blanos, everything. It, everyone that can watch it, they'll be a fan and they'll relate to it and they'll be like, oh, cool, I get this reference from this or get this reference from this. So I think it'd be a nice little trilogy to end on. Okay. Oh, it de- definitely sounds interesting, man. Definitely sounds interesting. I Watching I Made War of the World, I got kind of a hitchhiker's guide vibe from it uh okay 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 very fair douglas adams yeah uh, well i'm a i'm a big doctor who fan obviously Doc, douglas adams is right for doctor who as you can see I'm, oh my, my camera's yeah i'm a very big doctor who fan as you can see but um jonathan carley who plays um who plays the lead in uh, in War of the Worlds? He plays uh, the War Doctor in uh, Big Finish Audios, which is officially um, officially licensed by BBC. They're the Doctor Who uh, audios. So he's taken over because uh, Sir John Hurt, uh, John Hurt passed away, mm. and uh, John John Carley took over his role because he does a very good John Hurt impression. So he's yeah, so he's a Doctor, and we're Doctor Who fans. So we're kind of like it is kind of bleeding in. Even incidentally, like not by choice, but it's kind of the cost. The costume choice for Jeff, for example, is very much inspired by Peter Capaldi's Twelfth Doctor. Mm, so it's like, oh, okay, I he see. bleeds in, and then and then when he's playing HULs in the Time Machine, he's he's in tweed and a bow tie, like Matt Smith from from season the the Eleventh Doctor, which is hanging above me right now. Actually, <laughs> um, so I think yeah, so. Yeah, I, 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 Hitchhiker's less so, it probably more Doctor Who than Hitchhiker's, but again, Douglas Adams wrote, both, wrote for both, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Well, the funny thing is, I, I kind of feel Jonathan Carley looks a little bit like a cross between Matt Smith and David Tennant. Uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I get that. I absolutely get that. <laughs> so he, he used to be known as, uh, when he used to, because he's, he's a voice actor, so he used to do... Um, uh, so yeah, he used to do voices online. So he he was known as the tenth Doctor, the tenth Doctor guy. Because he used to do with David Tennant really, really well. And we did a we did a sketch, we did a very short comedy sketch um, to to celebrate the 60th anniversary of. I shouldn't say this actually. Never mind. I should not say this. <laughs> no one was in it. No one was Nick Briggs. And no, no, never mind. That is off record. <laughs> that is not to be said because he will kill me. No one's in it. I don't know who voices it. <laughs> Nothing. BBC, don't tell me. <laughs> never mind. BBC, BBC, give me permission. So, never mind. <laughs> what What has been your favourite iteration of Doctor Who so far? Oh, Doctor Who. Oh my god. Um, 
I'm a very I'm a very John Pertwee guy. Uh massive, mm-hmm. massive third doctor guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Massive, massive. I think I think that's what first got me into it originally. Um, because the the Green Death was filmed very, very near me from where I'm from in South Wales. Um so it's kind of a generational thing that got passed down. And I was mm. like, oh, okay, cool, that's cool. Kind of forgot about it. And then obviously uh, Chris Reckleson series got brought into it. I got massively, massively into that. Kind of after he left, actually. So I kind of picked up in between uh, Eccleston and Tennant and kind of fell in love with the show. And now <laughs> I think everyone, all my friends are Doctor Who fans, so it's really weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'm a massive, yeah, John Perry for me. Like, the original, you know, the, the suave doctor is massive, massive for me. So, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, interesting. Hmm, yeah. I think, well, for me, I liked it the most when, um, oh my god, my mind has just gone friggin' blank. Oh man, I'll go for it, go for it. I'll, I'll, I'll help, I'll help as much as I can. Ah, oh, it was. He wrote coupling. Um, the showrunner. Oh, Moffat. Yes. Stephen Moffat. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, Stephen Moffat. I yeah. think Stephen Moffat is a frigging genius, and I love. Yeah, he's, fa- he's like that yeah, when he did he's it, and you've got the that David Tennant episode, which ties into the Matt Smith episode. Uh, silence in the library, and yeah, oh my yeah. days, <laughs> yeah, your watch is gonna be like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, with River Song in the library, yeah, it's fantastic, yeah, He's, yeah oh. Moffat's so clever. So, his um, one of my favorite series of his is Jekyll. Oh, yeah, he did, a, he did a, yeah, he did a modern, modern ad- adaptation of Jekyll with um, James Nesbitt, mm. fantastic. absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, who knows? I made, I made Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, who knows. <laughs> who knows <laughs> yeah but Moffat Moffat's incredible the latest episode he done as well I thought was the strongest one of shooting season was Boom I thought it was fantastic it was a great bit of drama and suspense I thought it was fantastic yeah so like the Matt Smith because you know you had um, yeah River was a, an all, Alex Kingston is such a great actress you know what I mean so incredible. I just loved that incredible, run yeah loved that run yeah, she's a Incredible, and, incredible. Such a I'm, fierce, I'm fierce not a fan really of Russell T. Davis, so I'm kind of that's fair. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. I think, it's I think you have a bit of appreciation. Yeah, yeah, I think you have a different appreciation. I think every, every, everyone appeals, Doctor appeals to everyone, doesn't it? So it's very mm. generational. So I think, yeah, it's like even the Chibnall era right now with Jody and uh, Jody and Chris Chibnall, I think that that. I'm starting to have a more of appreciation for that than I probably did at the time. Um, but I think that's really, really good. And I'm rewatching it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is, is not what I thought at the time. I'm quite surprised by it. And I was like, that's really good. I'm really enjoying it. Hmm. But, yeah. I, cool. I do get it. I do get it. Yeah, it's very really nice. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's and she's fine. The, and she's the only... She's the only other person to play the Doctor with two actual heartbeats because when she filmed her regeneration, she was pregnant. So... Oh shit! So she's she's the only other person to play a Time Lord with two actual heartbeats. So she went full <laughs> method. So yeah, man, that's that's a nice little trivia of you. So yeah, no, yeah. And Jodie comes across as she's she's so lovable. So it was yeah, great. So there you go. Uh, Fun little fact. <laughs> yeah, didn't know that. No, I did. I didn't see any of those episodes because I'm just yeah. I, I kind of got a bit, I checked out a bit of the Chris the Paul, C- Capaldi stuff, but it just seemed like he was playing an angry Scottish dude that he did it in the thick of it. And I was just a bit like, eh, you know, so I was kind of. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, I think season, season, te- uh, season eight is very, very angry, angry Scotsman. Uh, I think season nine, eight, I think. It, it changed and he become more like Matt Smith. It become a bit more jovial and a bit more. Um, and then season ten, season ten is phenomenal. I think Capaldi strikes the right balance. I think if you watch season ten, that is Doctor. Like, and you're like, oh, you struck gold, yeah. I was like, I could watch this forever. So it, I, I recommend um, uh, what was it World Enough and Time and the Doctor Falls, perfect episodes. And Capaldi's great in it. Capaldi's great in it. And Michelle Gomez as well, who plays Missy. Um, 
man, everyone, Pearl Mackey and Matt, and, uh, Matt Lucas, they're phenomenal. They're two fantastic bits of writing, and especially the first episode as well. Very, very, very gothic horror. And then uh, the Doctor Falls really delves into the psyche as well. The relationship between the Doctor and the Master is fantastic writing. It's like, um, yeah. Right. yeah I, I'd, I'd seriously recommend it. If you, if you want to give Capaldi a try, try season 10. Season 10 is his Doctor at his best. All right. I'll have to, uh, yeah, keep a note of yeah, that. Really, when, when I, really. When I've got a spare moment, I might go delve into it. Yeah, I think I think it's worth it. I think it's definitely, definitely worth it. <laughs> so sci-fi is your bag, really, would you say? Yeah, it very much is. It very, very much is. I don't know where I don't know where it come from. I, I think it just very otherworldly, I should say. I don't know. Yeah, always just yeah, have a massive level of sci-fi and comedy. They try to integrate them as much as possible. Um so yeah. I think I I try to think what my favorite film was then. It just left me. So I think I mean, my favorite film growing up was Jaws. So yeah. So it's kind of very, very far away from sci fi. But <laughs> yeah, Doctor Who caught Doctor Who caught me at a young age and uh yeah, just kind of intuned it into me. Interstellar. Love Interstellar. What a film. Love a massive Nolan fan, so yeah, I have to give Interstellar another watch because uh, it didn't wow. grab me the first time. Didn't grab me the first. No, that's time. fair. No, I, I can see how it wouldn't. I, I think I went through. I think I went through a run where I'd always fall asleep in the cinema. Um, yeah, that's what you do. I fell asleep in the Avengers, um, the first <laughs> one, and I think I woke. I think I fell asleep when Loki was in a cage, and then I woke up. I was like, "Is Loki still in the cage?" I was like, "Yes." I was like, "I haven't missed nothing." Then. Um, I still have the same enjoyment as it, uh, anyone else. But yeah, I think in the cell, I remember watching the cell and I was like, this is masterful. I was like, this is phenomenal. And I think uh, I love Chris Nolan as well. So I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is the way he makes films. It's phenomenal. So especially when he tries his hand. Even Tenant, I absolutely love Tenant. Probably the minority. Oh, but great. I, yeah, I really phenomenal. enjoyed Tenant. No, I mean, yeah, man. Superb. Yeah. But I think the soundtrack on Interstellar as well is superb. Yeah, soundtrack. the soundtrack I do. No. I really enjoyed the soundtrack. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, no, yeah. And like I was, I was working mad long hours when Interstellar came out. So I just remember I did fall asleep during it as well. So I was just like, yeah, oh, man, I absolutely. Watch. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you should definitely do it. Definitely do it. It's, yeah, it's a phenomenal piece of filmmaking. Phenomenal piece of filmmaking. Yeah, I definitely recommend it if you want to. Just have a nice, well, not chill out, but yeah, just, just engross yourself in cinema. Just watch into Interstellar. Mm. Yeah, I, I think it's an, the anniversary of Interstellar as well. It I is, think, yeah, I yeah. I think, I think it's going to be really soon. So, or, or it, it's either getting re released or it's just been re released. Yeah, if I have to make an probably he's probably, he's probably going to correct me in about 10 minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> he probably will. <laughs> Yeah, so it's either re- it's either been re-released or it's just been re-released. But mm. yeah, you'll probably correct me after the call. So yeah, <laughs> film. On. What was the thing that got you into filmmaking? Uh, so it, it, it was Doctor Who, but it wasn't actually Doctor Who. So uh, when Doctor Who came out in the UK, um, it, there was a show that aired afterwards on, afterwards on BBC Three, which was called Doctor Who Confidential. Uh, which broke down the filmmaking process and broke down what every everything that went into a show, like the script writing, storylining, acting, choreography, cinematography, and um, being a grip, being a runner. I think oh. it, it showed it showed everything behind it. I think it's on iPlayer mm. now, uh, BBC iPlayer for everyone that's watching in the UK. Uh, all the episodes there, but it showed what went into making an episode of Doctor Who. And it was every, so I, I love Doctor Who with a passion, but I love Doctor Who Confidential more. I was more, in, I, I was looking forward to Doctor Who every week, but I was looking forward to Doctor Who Confidential more. And I think as a kid growing up uh, from the South Wales Valleys, I think there's it's not a lot of prospects there. I think everyone that, that is from around my area, I, th- I think it's, it's a low socioeconomic area. So there's not many prospects going on. It's a high poverty area. Mm. And I think to have the aspirations of being like, oh, wow, you can do this for a living. You can make films for a living. Like, oh, my God, you can be creative for a living. Like, you're not working in a factory. Like, you're not working in a shop. You're not working in a, you know, in, in all these different environments. You can actually go out and you can be creative. Like, 
I can I can do this for a living. I thought that was fantastic. And then you see the thought processes behind it and, and how they do it. And I think that was, that's what got me into filmmaking. And then a lot of a lot of my generation now, I think, and a lot of the people I bother with, they they are known as like the Doctor Who confidential era because we learned filmmaking from that show. And I think that bred into all of us then is right, okay, cool. We kind of know what we're doing because we've seen it on telly and we've yeah we've watched it, we've recorded it, we've got it on tapes, and it's like, okay, cool. We kind of already got a grasp of it. I think that's kind of what pushed us to do it. It's like these people can do it. We can do it. You can make a living from being creative. Oh my god, let's let's go do that. That's a lot more fun <laughs> than you know working in a factory. So mm. yeah, I think Doctor Who Confidential massively. Interesting. Uh... I recommend it if you watch. Yeah, some BBC I play for everyone in the UK. Some BBC I play. Go watch it. Doctor Who Unleashed now um, uh, for the new series. But yeah, Doctor Who Confidential back in the day, phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm. So that started with the um, Eccleston. The Eccleston right? era, yeah, 2000, 2005, yeah. I think all of them are on iPlayer. Go watch it, man. If you want to learn filmmaking, just go watch it. Like, Just go watch it. They, they delve into everything. It's like the amount of like nuggets you can pick up from them. It's just like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, you see I'm filming in traverse weather conditions to hot sun to bleed and rain it's like oh man cool you can see any of the talk to the grips the cam ops dops everything like music editing composing acting directing it's like everything is there and it's like yeah it's just where it's, it's a behind the scenes show that encouraged a generation of filmmakers who uh, encouraged an entire generation of people that didn't know how this thing was done mm. and then all of a sudden it's like cool the point of it this is how we do it and it's like oh well i can do this with my friends like my friends watch this. They can yeah. be interested in this. They can pick up how to how to grip, how to how to be a DOP, how to do this. And it's like cool. So it breeded that that generation of the Doctor Who confidential, uh, which is why in like two thousand and five to two thousand ten, there was such a, like a a massive explosion of like Doctor Who fan films because Doctor Who actually gave the game away itself. It's like this is how we do it. Mm-hmm. Go do it. Go do it yourself. So that's where that's where the explosion come from of Doctor Who Phantoms because Doctor would be telling everyone how to do it. So that's why you had the golden generation Doctor Who Phantoms was two thousand five to two thousand ten. So yeah, that makes sense. And I I've also I think it's like the effects on Doctor Who were they were decent, but they didn't look crazy out of reach. Like you watch no. some things and you think I could never do. I don't have that. I couldn't do like you watch Babylon Five, and you could be like, I I couldn't make a Vorlon, right? No, I, but, I, I, yeah, I, I think really it, it, ble- it bleeds from it bleeds from the seventies, doesn't it? From the from the classic era, it's like you know your wobbly walls and you know your paper yeah. mache, and you you know it, it's very it's very much it's not polished. It's very rough and ready, and it's very hardcore. It's like you can go do this if you want to do it yourself mm. realistically. I think that's where it bleeds from. And yeah, yeah, fans can probably do better. I know they hired some fans to do effects for the shows because they were doing it on YouTube. It was, nice. It's very much in the public zeitgeist now. Not now, now they got yeah. Disney money. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but back in the day, it's like, oh, well, if, 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 if you come to enough and you're willing to craft, it's like you could produce something not near that level, but close to. Mm. Yeah, it's it's like that whole buckethead thing with Star Wars. Yeah. Like I yeah. remember seeing a a trailer for something they did, and I'm thinking at first I was just like, oh, there's a new Star Wars series coming out. <laughs> and I didn't realize it was like this fan-made thing because it just looks no, so st- Star Wars fan films are like another level. They they yeah. just Another yeah, it's level. Insane. It's the same with the Star Trek guys as well. They're just all are just another level. So I think Doctor Who's got a long way to catch up to like that <laughs> level. But but obviously that like, I think Star Wars and Star Trek is more in the in the American the American uh in the American Zeitgeist, but I us British we're, we're too busy down the pub. Um yeah. <laughs> we have different yeah. culture, I think. But I also so I think yeah, it's phenomenal. You know, as we just said, like the Doctor Who back in the day had the kind of the feel of that blue peter homemade so you like you're running off that aesthetic where you know star trek and star wars 
were a higher level production. So people, yeah, I, I think there was a lot more forgiving. From... Yeah, yeah. So I think Doctor has always been a little bit more forgiving, with, mm. uh, a little bit, a little bit something more ropey. Was like, well, the show was never ever as polished as 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 a Star Trek or a Star Wars. So that like you can kind of take a little bit of a little bit of leeway with it. You can kind of have a little bit of fun with it, but you can kind of get away with it because the show did as well. But yeah, so I think that's where that comes from. So it's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Okay, so that's how you kind of broke into things. You kind of thought, this is what I'd like to do. But, like, you know, you're writing, you're producing, editing, you're doing all of these different things, right? So how do you cut? mentalize your time right how do you separate that focus to be able to do so many different aspects of this uh it's a good one i don't I, to be honest i don't know um i kind of i don't i i got brought into the industry as a i got brought in through sound i never wanted to do sound before in my life it kind of offered me a sound position and i was like eh, i'll do it just to get experience yeah, everyone like I wanted to be. I wanted to be on camera because everyone wants to be on camera. There's no position for me on camera. They were like, "Oh, well, give you sound." So I thought it's going to help me in terms of my filmmaking. Eventually, moved up. Uh, not moved up. Moved across. Sorry, <laughs> any sound diesel <laughs> mirrored me for that comment. <laughs> I, I didn't move up. I moved across. I moved from sound to camera, and then went to a director and producer. So kind of, I always wanted to be a director, never wanted to be a producer, actually. never ever wanted to produce before in my life. But it was when I was doing my university degree as my master's, um, the only degree they had for a film and TV university, the only degree they offered a master's level was producing. And I was like, oh, well, go, cool. I'll, so I'll do that then. <laughs> bizarre, <laughs> bizarre. But I, did, I, so I did that then and I kind of balanced the two. I think a lot of, you know, there's like, no, Nolan directs and produces, not compared mm. to Nolan, Jesus Christ, but he, he directs and produces. Um, so yeah, kind of found found a way to balance it and kind of, right, okay, cool. And I think, I like to think I'm a people person and yeah, I manage to chat to people and they like, they like working with me and a lot of people do. And we have a lot of fun on set. I think we like to keep sets very fun. I think uh, one, of the, one of the biggest things is I, we just, put the trailer out for I Made the Time Machine. And one of the cast members was like, is that the film? And I was like, yep. And he was like, that's not the film I made. And he was like, I was on set. And he was like, that's completely, he was like, I'm in a different movie too. Like, I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was like this at all. And I was like, eh, you're completely different. Like, you're making a completely different film. And he was like, oh, I'm very surprised. But yeah. <laughs> But we had fun. Right in a good way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was like, "This is." He was like, "We're making an action movie." I thought we were making a light hearted comedy. I was like, "Ah, oh, I, I may have tweaked it a little bit to seem a bit more actiony." But, but yeah, it was like it's a lot of fun. But yeah, no. Um, in terms of editing as well, um, like I, I work a lot on commercials. So I, I direct and produce and shoot a lot of commercials as well. So it's it's kind of ingrained in me to be like, "Right, cool, get the footage, boom, gone." Mm, so mm. It's kind of it's kind of ingrained in me to be like, okay, cool. And when we're shooting as well, the DOPs I work with is kind of, we shoot for the edit. So we kind of know what we're doing. Yeah. So yeah. It's kind of already ingrained into me on how to work. It's kind of learning to park and mentalize and be like, and when we have a different producer in and, and they're like, oh, cool, I'll hand you control. And then I'm like, well, this is what I would do. <laughs> it's kind of learning to stay off certain aspects. Which is I'm finding difficult, but it, it'll come. I'll come. Mm, so. mm. Is it like shooting commercials, right, and then coming back to do your own thing? Is it hard to define your voice? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I very much think so. Like, I got broken into the industry in a in a. Uh, in a TV background, in a comedy drama background. And then so when I was shooting commercials, it's like, oh, well, I can shoot as well. I like, mm. I'm not amazing at shooting, but I'm a competent shooter, I'd like to think. But it's, it's then going back, it's like, cool. I have really got a style, I think. But it's like, that is my background, but I'm, I'm competent at what I do. So it's like, 
that's my main focus. The commercials is, is what pays the bills at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so we just so we just we just did one now with um, Tyson Fury, who is you know former world champion boxer who's, mm, mm. who's uh, just lost just lost to Alexander Usyk, who is actually my boss. Um, not Usyk Fury. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just did it. We, we just uh, so they wanted a commercial for for the relaunch of his new energy brand, but we did a three minute comedy sketch instead. Uh, which is good. We took we took uh, we took we took uh, the piss out. It was, it's a very much is a it's a paintball western film slash horror film. It's really weird, but it's good. Like that's done well. It's got like one point two or one point three million views online, and it's did really well. And it features a former world heavyweight champion. Um, yeah, again, if you, if you watch my stuff, it's very very scatterbrained approach because the people I work with are very very talented and like the DOPs and stuff. When I'm doing drama or documentary I, I don't tend to shoot it's, it's more these guys yeah because i guess you probably find a style through the commercials but that's not the style that travels across because yes i'm not, yeah. I'm not the one shooting so yeah it's very much a balancing act but i, I want to be over there not with the dramas not with the commercials unless tyson really watches this then i want to do commercials for the rest of my life <laughs> hey well you know what i mean like if you're getting all of these views for him I don't think he really cares. You know what I mean? Because it's obvious you yeah. know what you're doing, right? It's a, it's about yeah, finding that story, right? That unique way of capturing people. And a lot of adverts are shit. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you found that that little nugget, then boom. Yeah, 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 no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I had a lot of fun on the day as well. I got bit by mosquitoes to death. It was great, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, f- 50 odd bites on each leg right around my ankles it was, like, oh, it was fantastic yeah it was great <laughs> I was the one telling everyone to put bug, uh, bug spray on and I'm the one that got bit because I forgot <laughs> so, great uh, I mean you know you're the director you're the leader so uh, yeah you have yeah. to take the hits right <laughs> yep exactly top one for the team With all the bites <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. Like, um, what about the writing? Do you enjoy that aspect of things? I love writing. I love it. I don't. I don't do it enough. I. I think. Yeah. I, I struggle with. It. So I work with a writer who's very, very talented. Very, very talented. His name is Jamie Carroll. So he co-wrote War of the Worlds with me, and he co-wrote The Time Machine and The Invisible Man, and pretty much everything else I'm doing. But originally, because I had War of the Worlds, and it was written very, very Welsh. And I moved to Manchester, and it's very, very northern. And I was like, this does not translate at all. <laughs> it's the same. It's, my, my version is like Uncle Bryn from Gavin and Stacey fighting off a Martian. I was like, this does not work. And uh, <laughs> and so I was like, here's, here's it. Please fix it. Make it northern. Do it. Do what you can with it, please. Uh, so he did. And yeah, we worked together on everything else. But yeah, I, I think I think the writing is more his his type of thing. But yeah, he's he's the sole writer, and he's he's phenomenal. He's great. He's great at what he does, and bless him. I think he's he's going out to the states soon because he's going to some film. I think he's going to Philly Film Festival um, with War of the Worlds potentially. Um, who knows? Um, yeah. So yeah, but he's he's a very very talented guy, and what a, what a life story that guy has. And uh, yeah, I think he brings a lot to the table. And I kind of have I'm very scatterbrained in like right. I got an idea. <laughs> This is my idea. He's like, okay, oh, cool. Let's let's let's, let's plot this out. Okay, <laughs> let's let's just work at this. I'm like, okay. So I say he's the sensible one. I'm the manic one. When I'm just like, yeah, let's just throw shit at a wall and see what works. And he's like, well, I know what work. Let's just get rid of the rest. <laughs> let's just work at it. So yeah, it's a nice working relationship. Guy. He's one of my best friends as well. Bless him. He's he's thirty seven. He looks about twenty five. He's actually 36 and he'll kill me because I said that. He's actually 36. <laughs> he could be 40. Who knows? He could be 40. Who knows? Yeah, he's a, he's an incredibly, incredibly talented writer. So, yeah, he, he's yeah, it's a nice working relationship. We have. And he's one of my best friends. So, mm-hmm. it's, it's very, so, very nice. How did, uh, you know, that collaboration come together? Uh, so, we know each other for years through the, through the Doctor Who fan film scene. And uh, we only properly met when when I moved to Manchester, and it was my first day moving to Manchester. I think they just lifted lockdown restrictions in 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 England, not in Wales. Um, 
so we went out for a pint because we could do that in England. So I was like, hey, I can go out for a drink. And um, yeah, so I think we just kind of, we, we knew of each other and we were, we were aware of each other and we were kind of, okay, we talked to a couple of times and then we met and we were just like, yeah, cool, man. We're very much cut from the same cloth. Mm. This, is, this, is, this is great. Very much a kindred spirit. So it is phenomenal. Ah, oh, splendid. I mean, that I watching the film, you do get a sense that everyone was having a great time, right? It, yeah. it just see, it's funny. You can you watch certain things and you just go, I feel they had a fun set. I think they had, a yeah, good it, it, it was, it was good. It was good. It was good. There's certain bits of it which is very, very stressful. So it, it, there's bits, uh, there's bits towards the end where um, uh, I think after they do the the, uh, the underground speech with the, the artillery man, and they cut to the bench, and they're like, "Oh, that sounds nice." Before before the Martian tripod arrives, yeah. Oh, uh, before before something falls out of the sky, shall we say? And you got the underground tunnel bit as well. Those two bits they were filmed on a bank holiday. On a bank holiday Monday, because in my head I was like, "Well, everyone's going to be out on a bank holiday Sunday on a on a piss up, so no one's going to be out early on a bank holiday Monday." Completely oh, forgot dear. families are a thing. Yes. I was like, "So I completely <laughs> forgot." So we were in this park at nine a.m. in the morning. Oh my god! I was just full of families, and I was like, uh, "I was like, I fucked this up completely." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god!" So. But it was fun because we had to like, right, okay, cool. Everyone's on it. Everyone worked at it. And uh, yeah, it was, it was stressful, but it was fun. And then we were like, let's change location. Let's go down here. <laughs> and we went to another park, which we all had permits to do. Like we all, it was all legal and above board. Whoever is asking and watching this. Yeah, no, you, you but, seem like the guy that would never, ever no. do anything if you didn't have the right paperwork. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, never, never. Yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good. Yeah, I forgot families were a thing. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> like going into stopping people. This... No, they're completely yep. stopping people on a public path as well, just to film a giant monologue. It's like, come on, that sort of thing. Uh, oh man! Like, what? What kind of? When you were looking at this film, what seemed like it would be the biggest challenge, and then what actually was? I don't. I don't think anything seemed like a challenge, to be honest. It's because um, me and Robin, um, who is the DOP, uh, we worked together for years. I, I think I've known him since I've known him for about seven years now. We knew him about my master's degree. We we worked together at the BBC. I was a producer. He was he was the director of photography. Um, Jimmy came on board as writers. The script was there. The cast was there. We had pretty much all the locations backed up. Nothing really seemed like a challenge, to be honest. It it was kind of maybe we haven't worked together in a while, so we haven't worked together in about a year or two. So maybe he's trying to get back up to speed very very quickly to kind of get back on the same page. But it's like nothing seemed like pretty much a challenge. I think we were prepped enough beforehand that whoever stepped on set, if if I stepped on if I stepped off set, everyone knew what was happening and what was being shot at what time so it could have run anyway i think all the actors were well drilled and everyone knew what they were doing so nothing really was a challenge if i'm being honest everyone was having fun everyone knew what was expected of them everyone knew what the scene was so yeah it pretty much flowed like anyone could have stepped off set and we would have had the same film essentially so Mm. really nice in that in that way okay yeah i kind of get the vibe that you're one of those cats that can go with the flow. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, because it's just like if you're watching Doctor Who Confidential, right, and and you're getting that insight into the industry that way. Yeah, I, you, you, there's. I think there's those people that need everything meticulously down, and if there's a change. Then it's just like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Oh my uh, god! Yeah. Oh, the wind has changed direction. I don't know how I'm gonna do this now, right? And, and then there's the yeah, people like yourself who just adapt, right? And I yeah, think I, I, I think yeah, I think you need to be quite free and kind of be quite loose because 
you know, you have so many different variables over the day. It's like, well, what could go wrong will go wrong. It's like, mm. you've got to be prepared for it. And it's like, cool, just deal with it, move on. You know, you're just, you're just going to crack on. Yeah. Well, yeah. if it affects me, it's going to affect everyone else. It's like, this mm. it's not going to affect me. I'm not going to worry about that in three months. I'm not going to worry about it now. So let's just move on and just get it done. So, yeah. Well, I mean, things always go wrong, right? Yeah, you can be. plan for months. So, stuff always goes wrong. So yeah, no, absolutely. You need to absolutely. Be able to do that, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Especially when we, when we planned it, when I forgot about families on a bank holiday. So it's like, Cool. Yeah, which so is that, like, that went wrong, and that was my fault. Uh, but we made it work, that? and yeah, <laughs> well, we made it work. There was a fun fair going on as well around the corner, and I was like, "Oh my fucking god!" I was like, "This is this is horrendous." But yeah. we managed to do it. We managed. Luckily, the, the cast all knew their lines, and we were like, "Right, cool. Let's just smash this out." Hold a couple of people back. We got it done in, but I think three takes. I think we we really got it done in two, but we did three anyway, just to be safe. Then we're like, right, cool, let's move to the other end of Manchester where there's no people around because we already discovered there's a backup location. We had a backup. Let's just go. Cool, done. Nice and easy. Mm. I was like, cool. Mm. Was there a lot of ADR? No, none. None. Really? Nope. God. Not a single bit. Damn. Uh, not a single bit. Same for time machine as well. Not a single bit of ADR. Yo, sounds like you run a tight set son it's it's uh, the people i work with are very very talented so it's like yeah I, i'll give that to them yeah no no idea it's all good i think everything everything we shot is everything we shot is on screen apart from one scene it just it just interrupted the flow with the narrative so it's kind of not needed so i think we yeah every scene bar bar one made it in so yeah it was good uh-huh. awesome like um yeah and you're playing at sci-fi london how uh how yeah you man that? yeah but so i've been doing the, the london 40 hour sci-fi challenge for years never got in absolutely didn't get a sniff really now it's hilarious no nah, i never absolutely never got a sniff and uh, now um war of the worlds is playing and i was like mm. cool. <laughs> it's like, it's like the one thing that was specifically not made for them has got in and the one thing that we were like yeah we've got it this year we've got it and we were like yeah we didn't even make a short list this is like we didn't even get a mention i was like that's that's mad it's like cool is that like, I, was, I was i think uh i think the drp uh, who's my housemate uh robin he he walked in earlier and i was like check the check the sci-fi london uh instagram story and he's like oh okay man he checked it and he was uh he was like war the wills like best of the british and it, that was the cover and he was like oh shit and i was like yeah I was like, there we go. I was like, Add. the one film we didn't expect. <laughs> and it's like, that's the one that got in. I was like, cool. Yeah, so <laughs> over the moon with it. Absolutely over the moon to be a part of it. So, because we've been trying for years. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So, oh, well, that's great, man. That's, and yeah. like, is, is, do you think this is better than a 48? uh our challenge film like yeah getting that, yeah massively. like getting that winning that or having this you know what i mean well you know gareth edwards won for that was sci-fi challenge and now true. he's doing true, godzilla true. the monsters and star wars so you know <laughs> yeah oh, i want to do a star wars i want to do a star wars movie man yeah just doing new jurassic world as well yeah that yeah he's uh, doing the new jurassic isn't he yeah he is yeah yeah so, mm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so I think I think it is. I think it's more merit to it because it wasn't specifically made for them, and, and I think War of the Worlds as well skirts sci-fi very, very narrowly. Is 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 it is it sci-fi? Is it comedy? Is it drama? I think it skirts that line so much that we were kind of I kind of put it in. I was like, well, it's, it's a sci-fi in the last thirty seconds. Um, but the fact you got in, I'm like, I, I'm over the moon. I think all the boys are just all the all the, all the crew. Sorry, I did not They're over the moon with it. So yeah, I think it's it's a bit more of an accolade to be like, yeah, we got we got we got the we got the main one in. We got more of the worlds. In. Mm. So, yeah, I, we're all, we're more we're over the moon. Oh, that's great, man. Will you um be there on the fourteenth? Yeah, so we're trying to be. Yeah, so so I think uh, big finish and doing the doctor's uh, doctor radio recording as well. Uh, down there the same day, so I think Jonathan, ah. the lead actor, he's he's trying to 
trying to get down there as well. So I think we're going to try and do that. We're going to try and do the, the Jeff Wayne War of the Worlds immersive experience. And we're going to do the big finish in one weekend. So I think we're, we're going to try. We're going to certainly try. So uh, There's a I'm War trying, of the Worlds. Trying to make it, it, where is that? Yeah, so it's an immersive, it's an, it's an immersive VR experience. It's about two and a half hours. Um, so you go in and you live the uh, you live the musical, and it's fantastic. You go in and it's a live experience. It's like live theatre. So you went you go through all the worlds as it is, and a certain bits are VR, certain bits are live action. You fight the Martians, you fight the tripods, you go to Mars, and it's phenomenal. I've done it. I've done it once before, and uh, yeah, everyone else is jealous and they want to do it again. So I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> of course you will. <laughs> Have you sent Jeff the short? Absolutely not. So there's one, there's one, there's one version of uh, there's one version of um, of all the worlds where uh, right at the end, uh, you, you know the ending with the, with the yeah. tripods, and and of it, my, my composer did a did an outstanding job. But I, I completely cut it, and I put the. The, dun, 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 and the ooh la from the from the Jeff Wayne War of the Worlds thing in it, and he was like, "We can't do that." I was like, "I know, but it's it's for us." And I was like, "This is so cool." I was like, "We could do this," and he was like, "Take that fucking out," and I was like, "Okay," so I did, and, and he just did his his bit, and I was like, "It just works so well." But uh, yeah, eventually, I want to go see the tour next year, and I want to go meet him again. So maybe who knows? Maybe do the feature. Let's let's try and get some music from it. Why yeah, not? Give him a cameo. Well, why not? I I'm not going to be there. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like a little a, a walk-in or something. Be like, oh my God, is that Aiden? Love, you know what I mean? Just something like that. Lo love love to ju just Jeff Wayne in the bar. Just Jeff Wayne in the bar, in the background. Doesn't even know what's happening. So, mm. Love it. Yeah. Play himself. You know. <laughs> It'd be good. But no, I haven't sent it to him. Because he might kill me. Um... It is very much an ode. Yeah, and, and especially, not, if you, yeah. you know, that whole story, like going to the, the, the gig to see him, you were one of the 10, right? Like, in his wildest dreams, do you think he imagines that a kid that was at that event would then go on to you know what I mean? That's crazy. Like I bet he would love it. Yeah. That. When you think of it, yeah, because he signed the program. The program's over in the corner in the vinyl of which I've got it since I think it was like 20, oh, 2011, actually. I think it was. So it's, oh yeah, he signed it to me over there. It's two Luke Ula Jeff Wayne. And I think it's, it's sat over in the corner, right there. So I think I can uh, I know it's in one of the vinyls and one of the programs. So yeah, it's it's worth a... It's definitely worth a chat. Just make him aware of it, anyway. Yeah. He might not care. To be honest, he's made his money. He doesn't care about it anymore. I mean, they've got the tour again, so who knows? But who knows? It's worth a shout. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Exactly. No harm in trying. What's the worst he can say? No. Exactly. And send me a cease and desist. But who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I'm sure that won't happen. But uh, yeah, I hope not. I hope not. It's in the public domain. So exactly, exactly, man, man. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's gonna. Yeah, I think people at Sci-Fi London are gonna enjoy what you've done. Man. I think. I hope so. I think. I think it'll be. Very, I think it'll be very different from the rest of them. So I think if people go in with an expectation and they'll be like, oh, okay, cool. This is actually quite lighthearted and. Got a little bit of heart to it, so it's like, oh, okay. It's it's again, it's not sci-fi to the last thirty seconds, but I think I think someone will get like, oh, okay. If you're a the real fan, you'll enjoy it. I think, yeah, it'll be something very very different. So. Yeah, but I mean, I guess it's kind of like, what do you classify sci-fi? Because I, for me, right, I think sci-fi is one of those genres where there's no subcategories. Right, there's no sub, there's no real like subcategories of horror or like stand up comedy, right? So people just put that blanket tag on, you know what I mean? So it's just like there's so yeah. many different types of sci fi, 
right? Hard sci-fi, you know, lo-fi sci-fi. There's, there's just all of these different things. And I think with this, like, remember, there's that movie. Um, uh, what is it called? It's not batteries not included. Oh, my God. Safety guaranteed. Oh, Jesus Christ. It came out a few years back. It's on, I think... Safety not um, guaranteed. Yeah, I know which one you're on about. Yeah, yeah. I, I know which one you're on about. The time, the time travel one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was, which was a, which was a big inspiration for the time machine. So, oh shit! Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Safety not guaranteed was a very, very, very big inspiration for the time machine. Yeah, it's a great, so, it's yeah. a great film. But fantastic, like, fantastic movie. You, you know what I mean? It, it doesn't. You're not sure what it is. Yeah, and, yeah and then at the very the end, it's just like ah, and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, it's it's it skirts the line very very well. So, mm. which I, I think this one does. It skirts the line where you're like, no, it's like oh, it's like um, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good, yeah, fair play. Yeah. yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. Yeah. No. So I think yeah, I think will go down well. But looking forward to seeing. Oh, time machine and then the uh the third part of your the invisible man yeah yeah it should be good I'm looking forward to that one really looking forward to it should have a lot of fun a lot a lot of fun murder mystery mm. with the invisible man who knows <laughs> so, but the time machine hg wells is a time traveler hg wells is a time traveler it's trying to get back to 1895 yeah that i mean there i don't is. know why you'd want to but that's smart <laughs> Like Who now knows? he's got an iPhone. Why does he want to go back there? <laughs> Who knows? I think I got that. I think I got. I think I got the time machine right here. So this is. I think this is the time machine from, from the time machine. So, uh -huh. yeah. there we go. I think the tripod's in my bedroom actually. So. <laughs> as much as much to my girlfriend's dismay, the tripod is my mantelpiece in my bedroom. And the time machine's in the living room. And the time machine's a lot smaller. So, <laughs> yeah. Who, kn who knows? Who knows? Who knows where HGLs will end up? Hmm. Well, when you work it out, hopefully you'll stop by and we can have another conversation about it, man. Absolutely, man. That would be my pleasure. That was really good. Absolutely. Ah, tremendous. Well, yeah, this has been a lot of fun, man. Really appreciate your time. No, I've enjoyed it. Really, really enjoyed it. No, absolutely, man. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Enjoy awesome. chatting to you. How can people um, keep track of the film, yourself, all of that jazz, man? Let people know. Uh, yeah, so you can follow uh, Cinsco Pictures on, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It's not Twitter anymore, is it? It's X on Cinsco Pictures. Uh, just search for I Made War of the Worlds or I Made the Time Machine. Uh, myself, I'm director producer Luke Walters. You pretty much find everyone through everyone through the Cinescope Instagram anyway, or the Twitter. We're all there. Um, yeah, we're always very active, and we're, we're producing a lot of stuff as well. We're doing, as I said, we've got the Time Machine coming out. We're doing, and we're doing a new streaming series called Hooligans, which is about two Doctor Who fans living together, which is very much Friends meets Doctor Who meets Big Bang Theory. So that's going to be coming out in the new year. That we just we're in the middle of shooting now. Okay. Obviously, we're going to be doing the Invisible Man, so we're, we're doing a lot of stuff, which is very, very sci-fi based. So, absolutely, mm. yeah, just have a look on there. Have a look on the socials, and someone you'll find something you enjoy. So, tremendous, tremendous. All the links will be on the website, people. So make sure you go check those out. Go follow Luke. Go follow the uh, production company, the film all of that jazz make sure you turn up at sci-fi london on the 14th and um you know go say hello right shake luke's hand yeah, no, absolutely yeah absolutely be yeah. good to see everyone and, yeah and if you're a fellow doctor who geek i'm sure you can have a big conversation absolutely my miss my missus uh knitted me a scarf for my 30th she knitted me tom baker's scarf oh um, the, the very very long one I'm, uh, yeah, I, I think it's all raveled up. It's all raveled up here. Bless her. So Tom, I, I think Tom, ah. Tom Baker's Sky in his series was uh, 18 foot long, but she overshot it by seven, seven or eight foot. So it's 20, I have a 24, I have a 24 foot long Doctor Who scarf. So not complaining. 
It Black sounds Black. like you've got yourself a keeper right there, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. What, 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 a, what a birthday. What a birthday. Yeah. yeah. That's right. really nice. Uh, so. is, all, is all your stuff set in Manchester? No, so it's a bit, it's set all over the place. Cardiff, London, Manchester, pretty much wherever. I, th- I think we're trying to keep a lot of it ambiguous, but I think because mm. we tried to make this very much a northern voice. I think Time Machine is very, very ambiguous, actually. I don't think there's a single mention of Manchester in it. I think it's just in the north. Um, okay. Yeah, in the north okay. of England. I think we did one, I've worked a lot on, like, I did a couple of straight to straight DVD films that went straight out to. Uh, I think they didn't do quite like B movies in America, like Utah Cabin yeah. Murders and Halloween Jack, which is very much British actors putting on American accents, which at, at times were good and, and times were not. But mm-hmm. when you're set in the middle of Wales, it's not. So I don't want to kind of follow in the trope of let's do a sci fi and have <laughs> really accents in it that can vary. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but they turned out well. You can watch it like YouTube album movies on Netflix, for example. Um, but yeah, no, everything, everything is very much UK bound, shall we say? Very much mm, UK mm. bound, um, unambiguous, unless, yeah, More the Worlds is very distinctly mentioned in it is Manchester. So, Time Machine, I don't think is mentioned in Manchester from the top of my head. Okay. I can't remember. So, all right. No, we got someone in who's it. Irish, we got someone in who's from Yorkshire, we got someone in from Liverpool. So, they're very mm. northern bound and not, not pinpointed. Yeah. But, you know, I think it's interesting getting non-London stuff, right? There's a there's an author, Luke yes. Smithford, and he's got a book series, The, the Stone Man. It's okay. tremendous. It is, I think, oh, my God, we've got had, uh, I think there's been three books so far, and the fourth book is coming really soon, and the books oh, are so good. But it's set in Leeds. And, oh and, yeah, yeah. Um, my missus, yeah, my missus from Leeds. Yeah, ah, yeah, nice yeah it was just like I hadn't read anything set in Leeds, like a sci-fi-ish fantasy book set in Leeds. So it was just no. like, oh, this is different. This is interesting. No. And, and every horror story I hear is just from a night out in Leeds. So that's just like that's just a general <laughs> weekend. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I've. I've I oh man, I put I put on a a big kind of road show in Leeds, Newcastle, and oh, both good, of man. those were like Jesus Christ. The night before, just walking around, I was just like, God damn. Yeah, so it's a, they're a mad old place. But it's great, it's great. The people are the people are fantastic in the north. They're very, very friendly. So oh yeah, for sure. As, as a South Wales as well, it's, it's it's the kind of a kindred spirit. So it's like, yeah, it's great. Mm. We're all miners. <laughs> good surfing in Wales. Had some good surfing. Yeah, yeah it really is. Yeah. Shame about well, the rugby. We're a bit shit right now, but that's fine. Surfing's <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Yeah. <laughs> the sea around us is nice, but great. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, Luke, this has been a pleasure. Thank no, you man, so yeah. much. Really enjoyed it. No, absolutely, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, I will most likely catch you on the 14th. Oh, it's good, man. Yeah, great to see you there. Tremendous, man. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening, man. And people, yes, thanks. And you. go follow Luke. Go watch I Made War of the Worlds. And, uh, yeah, keep your eyes peeled for um, I Made a Time Machine and everything else to come. All Thank right. You. Take it easy, man. Yes. Bye. Bye.